Yeah, I know. It's a real corny intro. But hey, it works. Alright, welcome back to Grant's shop. It's midnight. I can't sleep. I'm bored. So I figure I'm going to build an RC airplane from start to finish. And I'm going to see if I can do it in an hour. Ta-da! That's what we're going to do. <laughs> I didn't say how big it was, did I? Okay. Wow, look at that. I don't have to build a wing. I don't have to build a rudder. I do have to make a rudder, though. Off the vertical fin. There's the elevator, fuselage, cockpit. What do you know? An orange receiver. This is, what, five channel? I've uh, been using this one for quite a while. Ripped it out of another airplane just for this because it's tiny. It's light. Um, it binds well. This is a, oh, it's a digital servo. I'm not sure exactly who makes it. Oh, Emacs. It is a 90, 9251, ES9251. They are teeny tiny. So between that and the E-Flight, uh, 1404, 2500 kV this this little snot's gonna do pretty good now that you could get you can get this stuff off of Amazon now for a transmitter I'm gonna be using this FS fly um, for the fifty three dollars including shipping that I paid from AliExpress this little unit has surprised me it binds with both DSM-2 and DSM-X receivers, and it has a 10-channel memory. Uh, it's boiled down to the very basics. You only have two position switches, but it does do exponential and dual rate. Uh, for just a knock-around radio for these little park flyers, these are nice little units. All right, so let's get started. I'm wasting my hour. All right. Now, I was thinking, what, what am I going to use? Let's see. First of all, let's get an idea of where our weight and balance is going to be. So I'm going to shove all this on there. And yeah, I am going to be cheating. I'm going to be using some super glue and a hot glue gun. <clears throat> Kind of just loop that around there. And let's see. Look at there. That's not too bad. Right off the bat. Okay, so. I think is what I'm going to do. By the time you add the prop. And everything else. Let's see. I'm going to put speed control right there. And I'll put the receiver right here. And I will probably hot glue the servos right here to the side of the fuselage. I think that's a good choice. All right, so this means I'm going to need to cut that horizontal stabilizer and elevator apart so I can make them flop around and control the aircraft. Oh, wheels. Wheels, wheels, wheels. Huh, now that's going to be interesting. Maybe I'll see if I can't... Maybe I ought to split the wood here, put the landing gear in, like so, and then glue the wood back here. That's a really good idea. All right. Now, this is the Gillows flying machine. When I looked... It had the largest wingspan of all the Gillows rubber band models. That's why I chose it. Let's see, is that going to shove in there? Wow, yeah, that'll shove in there. But uh, we've got some, we've got some up in it. We can't have up. We got to have down. So we'll make some down. Just like that. You see that? 
I'll go ahead and hot glue that thing on there. Get my hot glue gun going. <coughs> things I get into in the wee hours of the morning. Most of the time I do it this late because my phone's not blowing up. I can actually get something done. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to cut with the grain. I'm going to cut that out. Put the landing gear in. There we go. Go ahead and put it right about there at the very end. This way I can move the wing fore and aft to adjust the center gravity a little bit, along with the battery. Oh yeah, the battery. All I've got is this monster. 300 milliamp. Well, it's going to have to do, and it's going to have to go up under the wing somewhere. Now, I, I do need to <clears throat> tighten that a bit. <clears throat> As I'm mounting the motor in the airplane with the hot glue, I'm trying not to get the hot glue on the end of the motor where the bearing is. That would be a bad thing. I'm also going to give it just a little bit of right thrust, just to compensate for P-torque. Because as this motor runs, that prop does this number the air coming off the prop goes like this in a spiral pattern and it hits this side of the rudder and makes it turn left. So with a little bit of opposite thrust on the motor, and it's not much, it tends to keep the plane right, or correct, shall I say. And let's see, I already did bind the transmitter to the receiver because I want to make sure Everything is working in the right orientation. I said I was going to build one from scratch. Okay, so here we have one, and that's not very far, so I'll put that in the middle. There we go. Here we have one, and that's, yeah, that looks terrible. So let's see, the plan would be go there and there on each side. So I get the arms on there where I need it. Yeah, let's put... These are some teeny tiny little servos. The only ones that I know of that are smaller and lighter are the little linear jobs. The ones that I did on the Gillow Cessna 170 build. All right, I'm gonna unplug that, turn the transmitter off. Put that out there. Start fabricating some push rods. Z-band pliers, these. Are great. See, makes a nice little Z-bend. Let me do one on each end. And I'm gonna cut them off. This is gonna be the servo side. And then this is carbon fiber rod that'll hook up to the servo. The way I like to hook them up there is to use some heat shrink tubing. And we put these in there.
come on. Cooperate with me. You're not cooperating with me. I might need bigger heat shrink. That's too small. All right, a bigger heat shrink. I'm gonna cut that right straight down the middle. Eyeballed it. Oh boy, have I got a bad eyeball. That's even worse. I know I haven't been drinking tonight, but you'd think I had. All right, that's that. Now, see, I had this crazy idea. Of using a little bushing go through there and then I can put both sides will that push through yeah that's good softball so what it's going not very easy but there we go Super duper glue. Make sure that bearing is in there nice and tight. And then the rudder, I'm going to cut up high. I'm going to come up this way, and then I'm going to come over for an aerodynamic balance like that. So we have us a nice high rudder. Now it's just a matter of a couple hinges. And of course, glue your thumb to it, Grant. That always works. Yeah, you bet. I love that. I always become one with my air airplane. Gonna be interesting to see how fast I can build this thing. Beauty. What do you think? Huh? 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 That looks great. All right. Now, for this one, I'm gonna cut off a piece of that. I'm gonna line this up on here. Now I'm gonna make this a full floating elevator. So we're going to line that up like that and then Grant's going to cut the ends of his fingers off while he does this. It's alright. It's not my airplane unless I bleed on it. Okay. The real trick to this is gluing the other side on through this bearing without getting glue in the bearing. And since I'm going to a full floating elevator, I don't need all those hinges now. Let go of my fingers. Let's see how far I have to do it. Let's be about here. The other little trick is to make sure both sides are even. We don't want them like, uh, right? Okay, now this is where Grant has to be very careful. I think I'm gonna get it. Yeah, look at that. No glue on the bearing. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Well, now this is going together fairly quick. Get the rudder in there. Or should I say the, the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. Glue that in. I just don't want the wings glued in place yet. All right. All right, let's get some push rods kind of kind of in the right spot. Well, I want to cut that push rod just right about there. And then that one there. And then for the rudder, I'm going to go a little bit further. Cut them a little long in case you have to trim them later. Oh, prop. That's a 5.3 inch by a 3.5 inch pitch. It is a replacement part for the UMX Pit Special. Somebody better remind me to tighten that thing before I go to fly it. I know you guys won't. All right, I'm going to take a couple pieces of this carbon rod and I'm going to cut two short little pegs. These are going to be the control horns. We're going to drill it with a toothpick. You're like, yeah, dude, you're crazy. And your point is, it works great. Oh man, that's a lot of wires. That's gonna have to change. All right, let's see, how are we doing on weight and balance? I like to keep checking it just so that I have an idea of what I'm doing here. Oh, see, it's getting nose heavy. So, I'm going to mount these components. Let's see, we'll put the receiver back here. Just temporarily, just to see how things balance out. And I need a little piece of the fuzzy stuff. doesn't work I'm gonna peel it off and reposition but if it also doesn't work I can also put the speed control up forward good grief that velcro's good stuff let's turn that around don't let me turn it around <coughs> oh, wow yeah let me turn it around okay Great. Now let's check CG. Well, that's looking pretty good. So by the time I put the speed control up here, that will really help balance out. And then I can uh, put the battery on the other side. All right, so cut a patch off for the speed control patch of each this is gonna by definitely be the fastest RC airplane I have ever built Usually my projects last for years. I don't know if you guys have seen my soft with camel build, but that one's going on for eight years now. 
it's getting very close to being done. Uh, I will be doing some aluminum foundry work to build the crankcase for the little Rotherham pump that pumps air into the fuel tanks because the real Softwith Camel did not have a fuel pump on the engine. It used air pressure from the tanks. Now, if you build a scale model, you better have all the scale accessories on there. And that's exactly what I'm doing. All right, we're gonna add that to the wing. Great. And the battery will sit there. Kind of like that. Wow, it's getting to be heavy, little beast. But I think it'll fly. See the hook? Oh yeah, the hook will latch on that. You know, they put that plastic on there to protect the uh, the adhesive, but I really think their main purpose is just to frustrate us old people. All right, so our rudder, which was the longer one, that one, I'm gonna turn that into there. What I need to do is, you're gonna like this, people. I'm gonna put one end on here. I'm gonna try to do this without burning the rudder. Well, actually, I'm going to do it this way first. Come here. I need it to shrink down around the rod. That is the worst heat shrink I have ever had. Anyway, we're, we're going to fill the rest with some CA. That'll make sure it doesn't come loose. Now, look at that, guys. What do you think? There's a control horn and a hinge on it already. Then you take the other half of that little thing and the Z-Bend, you drop it down through there, turn it around, connect them up. Straighten out your controls. shrink and then you put some CA on that quick and easy what do you think all right one more control surface and this project's probably going to be finished pretty slick eh I could have put that together before I put it in there so I don't burn my balsa wood. Duh! Haste makes waste. Super glue flammable when it's still wet? Probably is. Okay. Let's CA that mess. the other little half and the other little Z-bend. Get down in there. There we go. I could probably also take off that that servo arm too when I do it. Keep it from burning everything. But you know, I make the mistake so that you don't have to. Now on that elevator, I'm looking at the original slot that was in there. I want to line that up with pretty close to where it was when this thing was designed. Now we'll just burn the antenna off so that it turns into a free flight five feet after I get off the ground.
How do you like that? Let's go over the controls of this a little bit. We have elevator and we have rudder. So you can see how the heat shrink tube is made to flex with the carbon rod that's been stabbed into the balsa wood and glued into place. Same thing with the elevator. Okay, the engine or the motor has been hot glued into place along with the landing gear. And you can see that there's a slight right offset on the motor and a slight down offset. The whole airplane weighs in at 72 grams, the battery weighing 20 grams of that. So it could probably use a much smaller battery. But hey, I'm going with what I had. Oh yeah, before I forget, let's tighten down that prop, shall we? That ain't going nowhere. Okay, cool. And that works, look at that. Oh, whoops. Uh, it's a pusher. <laughs> we need a puller. So, I'm gonna change two of these. That's gonna go vertical. <laughs> okay. Um, watch for my post on the maiden flight of this. But that's it. I'm gonna have to look at my camera now, see how fast I did it. I'm gonna try to maiden this thing at the same time I try to maiden the little Gillow's um, flying machine. So stay tuned and we'll see how well this goes and if you haven't seen the build on this one I suggest you look at it it's been very popular